Hey, welcome back to our next episode in our aerodynamics series. Today we're going to be talking about aircraft structures, the little ones, the scale model structures that we'll be able to use in our educational facilities here and that we can use to model full scale structures or to build platforms to test equipment. The structures of these smaller aircraft are the same as the larger ones, of course. You have fuselage, a wing, landing gear, sometimes or sometimes not. It's not that's not entirely necessary. You have a propulsion system and the mounting and hardware to go with it, and then you have a tail and all the control surfaces that will be on your aircraft. As far as manufacturing goes, typically there are three main types of manufacturing styles that you can use to make RC or model aircraft. There are also others, um, some of which we use quite extensively, and we'll cover all in detail in this episode. The primary structures that you have to be concerned with in an RC aircraft are the wings and the fuselage. They're the ones that take up the most volume and typically take the most work and effort to build. And the three main types of materials that you'll use to make those, you can use either a balsa, balsa ribs, and a monaco covering. Monaco is a thermoplastic sheet that you cover it with and then you can iron down so that it conforms to the shape. Foam core with some sort of covering. There is a composite shell, and additionally, there's a foam, the foam ore type of material. And these are used for model aircraft, typically in the hobbyist realm, but they're not very structurally sound. So if you're wanting to build anything that's of a significant weight, you typically won't be able to carry that much on a foam board plane, although I can be proven wrong. I have right here a balsa wood wing, and you can see it's constructed of many ribs that get smaller, and to find the shape of the wing, and the leading edges are carved out of a thick balsa wood and also the trailing edge is carved out of thicker balsa wood. There's also a spar going up in the center. In this case it's wood and balsa manufacturing. It can often be a composite or a fiber, not a fiberglass, it's a composite. It can either be a composite or thicker wooden spar that is spaced up through the ribs. Balsa is covered in a monocoat thermoplastic covering that is extremely lightweight but allows it to deflect all the air coming around it. A covered balsa wood wing looks something like this. You can see it's, it has a durable plastic covering and they will lift quite a lot of weight. This is a very traditional and favored style of like hobbyists. The only issue is it takes an extremely excruciating long time to construct and build. So if you're planning on making a balsa wood aircraft in its entirety, you should plan your whole summer for it. Uh, fuselages can also be constructed of balsa wood and monaco, although it takes a little bit more wood involved in the structure for it to be structurally sound and hold up to the forces that it's going to take. The other downside of balsa wood is inevitably all RC aircraft or scale aircraft take some dives and get some damage or sometimes some really big crashes. In balsa wood, it's almost impossible to recreate your aircraft after a devastating crash. Once you get in a big crash, your aircraft is pretty much done. There are repairs you can do, but they're also very difficult, and it's hard to get it to look the same way that it was before, and you have to also replace the entire covering, which can be pretty expensive. The next common material that you'll see aircraft made out of is foam. It's incredibly durable, and it's a, uh, easy to be glued and replaced, as well as if any patching needs to be done, that can be done as well. And foam can either be made, foam aircraft are either made out of expanded polypropylene or polystyrene foam. These are the kind of manufactured, mass manufactured aircraft that you'd buy in a hobby store. And that is foam pellets that are compressed into the shape of your wing and your fuselage and are put together by a pre designed layout. However, you can design your own foam core fuselages and wings. Right here, I have a foam core wing. And this is actually the prototype aircraft for our design build fly team. This is designed to carry 10 pounds. Foam can be very structurally sound in that sense. Typically, you want to have a spar running up the center of any wings so that the foam is not bearing the full force of your lifting. Foam can be very brittle, but it is also very durable in, in a crash. Oftentimes, you want to coat your foam in another material so that it's all held together, also to increase the appearance, because if we're being honest, this doesn't look too great, and to make it much more durable. The material that you coat your foam in can be anything from balsa wood sheets to be incredibly durable. 
You can coat them in a composite material if you wet lay up carbon fiber, Kevlar, or commonly fiberglass. It makes a very lightweight but incredibly strong structure. Or it can be anything from on a coat, you have vinyl, or as in this situation, this is actually coated in just paper that's glued onto it using a doping mechanism. And this also can increase the durability and make the foam paintable and change the properties of your airframe. Foam is very popular for both wings and fuselages. I have here a mold, uh, carved foam fuselage and you can see this is being coated in the paper as we mentioned before. And so this is actually pretty durable and it's pretty structurally sound. So foam is a very lightweight way to build an airframe. The primary advantage to using a foam core covered material for your aircraft is that foam doesn't take an incredibly long time to manufacture. The wings that we showed you were carved on a foam hot wire CNC machine. And so once you design the wings, it doesn't take long at all to produce them. This was produced using lots of sanding and molding. And so it also didn't take an incredibly long time to produce, especially when compared to a balsa wing. The third and final type of major manufacturing styles for, our, for model scale aircraft is a composite shell. And so this involves forming a mold. And then in that mold, you would put either fiberglass, carbon fiber, or Kevlar both of which have their advantages and disadvantages. And this creates a shell of a very lightweight and durable material that you can then fill. And typically you'll use wood or another material to put a layout inside for all of your com components. Here's an example of a composite shell fuselage. This one is made out of carbon fiber. And there's also some structural material laid inside so that you use less carbon fiber because the composites themselves tend to be on the expensive side you can see it's completely hollow inside. So you have to be very crafty in the way that you mount your components, especially your propulsion. Composite shell wings are possible, but they're very uncommon. And this is because creating a mold for an entire wing also is typically a very extensive effort and requires a lot of material. Molds can be either 3D printed, they can be molded out of foam, they can be carved out of wood or other materials. Um, and once you have your mold, Creating a wing is a, more, is a pretty simplistic process. However, creating the mold itself takes quite a lot of work. The fourth and final material for RC aircraft is foam board. This is an example of a foam board airplane, or part, parts of a foam board airplane, that can be assembled together and actually flown. Foam board aircraft can be of considerable size, and they have the main advantage of being extremely cheap, readily available, and also really fast and easy to manufacture. As we mentioned before, foam board is great if you want to build a hobbyist aircraft for flying and to have fun, but if you want to build a structural component that can lift lots, foam board will never be able to lift quite as much as the other materials that we've mentioned earlier. In an RC aircraft, the most important structural component is actually the motor mount. It has to play a big role because it's taking quite a lot of force on it to pull this entire aircraft through the air. In foam board aircraft, as we showed last, it's actually the part that will break most often on the aircraft. Typically, when you're making a, a motor mount for an aircraft, you want to make it out of a very structurally sound material, such as a really hard wood, a composite, or in some cases, even metal. And you want to make sure that it's mounted to the airframe in a way that's very sturdy. In RC aircraft, there is a unique phenomenon that causes you to actually change your motor mount. Typically, when you're mounting your motor, you want it to be, if this is your motor mount, you want to angle it slightly away from the, direct, the forward direction of your fuselage. And this is due to the, what's called a P factor. As your propeller spins, it pushes the air behind it in a spiral motion. It leaves it very turbulent and spinning. And you have your control surface in the back, your vertical stabilizer, and as this air comes around, it will push on the vertical stabilizer and produce a torque opposite to the direction of the spin of your motor. And because of this, you typically want to offset your motor in order to reduce the effect of the P factor so that whenever you give your aircraft throttle, it will fly straight instead of turning and also producing yawing moment. Therefore, so if you have a propeller that's which is turning clockwise, you want to mount it slightly angled to the right, maybe about five degrees or so. If you fail to do this, 
you'll often experience a yawing motion to the left and also a slight roll to the right side of the aircraft, which that combination is somewhat unstable for an RC aircraft. It's also not the biggest deal, but it is a good idea to account for the P factor in the mounting of your motor. For the controls on your RC aircraft, typically some type of hinge is used in larger, on larger sized aircraft. These hinges can be a nylon hinge that will have a, an appearance resembling this. And this has the advantage of having a lot of surface area so that it can stick into your foam or glue onto your balsa and be more structurally sound. However, in a lot of cases, you'll also see these rod-like hinges. Because they are longer, they can stick harder into your fuselage, depending on how you mount them. But also, if you mount, one, if you mount them at an angle, as it bends, this type of hinge leaves a gap in. This can be very useful for flaps or other mechanisms, such as hatches or anything that you would want a single rotational direction on your control surfaces. Additionally, people also use various types of tape. There are very structurally sound forms of tape that can be used on even larger scale aircraft. And there are ways of mounting your tape hinges so that they can fold evenly in both directions without leaving gaps. So this has been just a brief introduction to some of the structures that you can be used in RC or scale aircraft systems. Most of these things have to be learned by experience and personal research. But these are some of the options available to you if you're looking to build something that flies. And we wish you luck.